Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Eric Stewart from Fishing Fanatics, and today I have an awesome guest, Gussie. Gussie, in his three seasons in the Elite Series, he won eleven. He bagged eleven top twenty finishes, including a win at the twenty twenty one Bassmaster Elite on the Tennessee River. Jeff is also an established outdoor writer and has been featured in a bunch of outdoor magazines. So, how you doing, Gussie? Oh, uh, pretty good. Just, uh, we're, you know, we've had a couple events already to start the new season and uh, just at home here for a couple of weeks and gearing up for the for the classic coming up. Um, it's actually at the Tennessee River. So had some success there in the past and uh, excited to, to get back to that place. Obviously, it's a, a special, special spot for me. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can rekindle some kind of magic here in a couple of weeks out on, on that body of water. Absolutely, man. Well, let, you know, let's just jump right in the back in 2021, man, when you ended up winning it. What, um, what are you carrying over from that win to kind of this season coming up here soon on the Tennessee river? What do you, are you trying to do kind of the similar things or looking for something completely different? Well, so, you know, I've been doing this for like 10 years. So fish the FLW tour for six seasons. And then this is my, this is my fifth season on the elite series. So like one thing that I've learned is the Southern reservoirs are never the same. Like when you, from one year, two years to the next, like water levels change, we're going to be there a month later than we were when I won that event. So it's going to be different. Um, and then obviously like with all the coverage now, um, be, uh, there was no details really left out of what I was doing there. So, I mean, I'm sure, you know, the, the spot's been fished hard and uh, I, I like, caught them all in one area. So, um, but you know that it exists and uh, the, it was, I had all smallmouths there, which, you know, well, they didn't expect uh, a smallmouth has to be 18 inches to keep on that body of water. So it makes, they got to be pretty big. Um, and, uh, but I know that it exists. There's lots of fish there and some of the techniques that, you know, that we use a lot back here at home, uh, work at that place. So I, I'm going to go there and, and really try to, um, push catching these smallmouth somehow, some way. Um, it could be shallower. It could be, you know, out deep again, but, uh, that's going to be my sort of main focus. Like if I got to go there and, and beat the bank with these guys, I'm probably not going to beat them, you know? I got to You got to kind of like, sometimes you got to just fish. However, the best way is to fish at each of these bodies of water. But if you can like sort of try and fish the way that um, you're most comfortable and feel like you have the most, you know, opportunity for success, uh, that's what you got to do. And while I was looking in your background a little bit, I saw um, something on your Bassmasters write up that said um, your specialty is electronics. So that offshore kind of brand of fishing where you're not necessarily on a bank and you're might be drop shotting for a couple of these uh, smallmouth. But what about electronics do you think works really well with your fishing? Is it because you're offshore and you're kind of throwing those um, deeper jig style uh, baits or what about electronics do you really like? So (coughs) um, obviously like. Uh, where I live, I live at a place called Lake of the Woods. So um, one of the best multi-species fisheries in the world. I've, and I've grown up guiding for walleye and pike and muskie, lake trout, crappie. We do a lot of, I've been ice fishing the last three or four days. Um, so just a lot of, exp, you know, a lot of time over the years using GPS and using sonar and, and just, you know, fishing offshore. Um, and that's, uh, you know, I just feel comfortable doing that. So if I can, if I can do that, uh, uh, you know, maybe feel like I have an advantage and I, I, I'm probably say that I used to feel like I had an advantage more, um, anymore. I mean, these guys are all so good now. If you're everyone that I fish against on the elite series is, uh, you know, they're the best. So it's, it's, uh, they all, they all can do it. And, and the, the sonar now has gotten so much, so good with, you know, I had the guys at Hennessy Outdoors in Tennessee help to rig my electronics on my boat this year, and uh, everything's just working awesome. It was a it was a real treat to kind of get to get to do that, um, and uh, you know, it's you, you, nobody's missing anything if those fish are down there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just I um I've been looking into live scope myself from uh, Garmin and a couple other ones like these uh, for Lawrence and Hummingbird, and I gotta tell you, I'm completely blown away about what they can do. I mean, I'm used to just kind of like a side imaging scan when just rolling down the uh, river, but when you could just sit in a spot and kind of look around what's underneath you, it's, it's really is a weapon. 
Yeah, it's, it is. And like, you, do, do you need that stuff to catch fish? No, but if you want to like fish tournaments and, you know, just if you have the means and you can, it's, I mean, it's so fun to use and it's it, like, I couldn't every single day that I fish, no matter where, whether I'm in Canada or Florida or in between, um, I'll catch a fish at some point during the day. And I'll, and, you know, I just think to myself, like, I would not have caught that thing if I didn't have this, like, it might just be that you see a stump or a, gl- a clump of grass or a boulder, um, you know, when you shine out away from the bank and you can cast your bait over there and you're hooked up. So, and then sometimes you just see the fish too, but, um, it, it's, it good or bad. I mean, I, I, uh, I've grown up like old school fishing. I mean, I, I, used to have a paper map in my hand and you'd have to line up the point off the, you know, the green boathouse and the Eagle's nest over there. And, you know, it's, it's changed a lot with, with GPS and um, all the technology that we have now, but at at the same time, it is fun and it makes um, finding and catching fish a lot easier than it used to be. Absolutely. I think it's good to have that kind of old style where you're just at a lake and you have to look at the bank and kind of the structure of the bank to see, you know, where you think fish are going to be kind of like that think like a fish mentality. But then when you add in those electronics, it's like, oh, that, oh shit, here we go. You got a whole new game plan. But that's awesome. And one thing I always like asking professionals too, when they come on the podcast is, you know, you've been an experienced pro for about nine years now. And one of the things I always like seeing is like, what's your story from kind of, you know, fishing up maybe with your parents or fishing up with your friends, kind of growing up, maybe you fish collegiately and then kind of how you got started in professional bass fishing today. Just take me through that story a little bit. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> kind of, uh, unorthodox way that I did it. Um, I, I, uh, from a young age, I loved fishing. Um, all I wanted to do, we have a big hometown tournament here at Lake of the Woods in Kenora where I live called the Kenora Bass International. And it's a big community event. It used to be a two day tournament the last 20 years or so. It's been a three day tournament. Um, but my parents, they had a kid's tournament off the dock, like while the big one was going on. So I did that when I was, you know, seven, eight, nine years old. And then for my Christmas present, when I was 10 years old, my parents got my dad and I an entry fee um, into the tournament the following summer. So that was sort of my, you know, I, I was young, my dad fished, but didn't bass fish, like fish for walleyes and trout, just more like fish that you ate. And, uh, we, we did it. And the, the first year, I mean, our goal is to just like catch a bass so we could walk across the stage and weigh in, you know? And, um, and then after a few years, like we really enjoyed it and loved it and fished some other smaller tournaments over the summer. And, uh, we, you know, after a few years, we started to get competitive and, you know, ever since then, that's just been my, my, uh, you know, my life's kind of revolved around, um, fishing all these tournaments. And then, um, in my late twenties, I, I was guiding a lot, you know, hunt deer hunting, fishing, ice fishing, anything. There's just, just staying busy, uh, trying to avoid having to get a real job. And I, I went to university kind of on the, I always tell people on the keep mom happy program. Cause I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, looking back now, I wish I would have taken like some business or marketing stuff, but, uh, but I just kept fishing a lot and then had a friend from Minnesota that kind of had the means to help me out and, and paid some entry fees for me. And I just kind of jumped right into the well, the FLW used to have these FLW tour open. So they were a four tournament series and the main tour was a six tournament series. So in 2012, I fished the, the tour opens and actually qualified for the full FLW tour, started doing that the next year. And, uh, and that's kind of where I'm at. I've actually never fished a Toyota series or an open or a BFL. I mean, I just went straight to the to the kind of top level. And, um, and, and I mean, I've had a lot of hardships along the way and got my butt whipped many times and learned things the hard way. Uh, but I kind of did good enough to just keep after it and keep at it. And, um, you know, now over the last few years doing it is, you know, I've been to a lot of the lakes now. Uh, there's always a couple new ones every year, but you just get your, my consistency's better. You know, you just get see a lot of these situations that maybe tricked you the first couple times and then you you maybe like okay the water's coming up i gotta go near the bank but you know like tidal places or flooding and that i mean that used to just be a nightmare for me and it and it's still like not i'm gonna have a you know it's a win if i can make a cut day three cut or something on one of those types of places but uh 
but yeah, you just kind of keep learning as you go. And if you can survive the first few years, like trying to make it at the pro level, um, then you you know, you're probably good. You're probably going to be, be okay. But, uh, but I've seen a lot of good anglers, you know, that I probably were more skilled than I am. Um, just didn't, didn't, you know, catch a few breaks along the way those first couple of years. And then all of a sudden you dig, it's pretty easy to dig a big hole. Um, you know, the, it, it's ex- very expensive to do it, but, uh, but if you, you know, I love it. So it's, it is what it is. So what's the, what's the biggest lesson you learned, either a life lesson or like a fishing technique lesson, um, throughout the years? Um, I mean, you gotta have fun. I mean, I, if you're not having fun, like I just seen, I've seen some of these guys that I was, you know, I'm good friends with that just like, uh, they, they go for it, throw it all on the visa. And then a couple tournaments go by and you have, you know, catch a little bit of bad luck. All of a sudden you're 10 grand in the hole. And it's like, I got to cash a check next week to pay my truck payment or my house payment. And then, and then like the pressure just gets heavy and you're not having fun. And then it's, it's very hard to like come out of that. And so just, you know, I've stayed with a lot of good friends and and uh my wife travels with me most of the time now and and that's awesome it makes a life a lot easier for us and uh but have fun and then just fish a lot i mean there's i get asked you know about about this all the time like how how do you make it and everything and um you know it's it's hard to get sponsorship now within the fishing industry i mean all the companies budgets are hammered um there's a lot of competition so you got to catch fish, whether you want to be a tournament angler or a guide, catching fish is important. And a lot of the, the other stuff will follow the sponsorship and, and media opportunities. Once you're, you know, you kind of prove yourself a little, little bit. So that's, that's what I tell people fish as much as you can. And just and not only on like your home lake where, you know, you can go catch fish. Like I, I hardly ever go out uh, when I'm at home or, you know, wherever and, and just fish places where I know I can catch fish. Like I don't, I don't care about that. I want to go like, for me, it's way more about the, um, figuring out what they're doing and figuring out new ways to catch, catch them and, um, that sort of thing, but just fish as much as you can and, and try to, you know, fish in as many different situations as you can. And that's how you're going to get better. <laughs> I'll tell you what I could see. Um, you know, being 10 grand in a hole after a couple of tournaments, how you'd start to panic a little bit. Um, that would be a real wake up call. Yeah. It's a fun <laughs> sucker. I can tell you that. I just, it's, it's, it's a, it's a ruthless sport, you know, like that. Cause when, you know, things go good. It's like the, the highs are really high, but then when you, you, you know, you break down or, or you just don't catch fish. I mean, it's, you only get three days to pre-fish for some of these things and they're big bodies of water. I mean, we were just at Lake Seminole and um, I'd never been there before and, and uh, like standing timber everywhere, hard lake to get around on. And you can only, I mean, it, three days goes by so fast. You just, it's hard to cover a lot of water. And, and um, you know, I kind of had a tough practice there and ended up with a 55th place. So I, you know, middle of the field, um, which, I, it, it hurts not making the top 50 when you're that close. Like it was only ounces, but, um, but at the same time, that could have been a lot worse too. I ended up catching a limit both days and, um, things went, went, ended up, you know, all right. So, uh, you know, sometimes if it, if it's, if you haven't figured anything out, just surviving some of those tough ones is, is a, is a win too. Definitely. Definitely. So let's um switch gears a little bit here. Um, as I know, you're an outdoor writer, you write a lot for different magazines and you get featured in a lot of them. How did you kind of get into that passion a little bit? Yeah. So uh, again, just going back to like, I got done university, I think in 2005 and I spent a couple months working for a contractor friend of mine and I was just doing all the no good jobs, like carrying shingles and drywall and just was grunt grunting, you know? And, uh, I just, I knew that I, there was some opportunity with all the fishing activities I was doing. I was getting some sponsors by that point. And, um, I just, I, you know, I just had finished university. So I felt like I knew how to write a little bit and I just started doing stuff for, um, more as a way to just promote like stuff that I was doing for my sponsors. Like I'm sure I, I wasn't really getting paid that well at the start, but I reached out to a lot of the different magazines and, um, 
And then, you know, as the web stuff's growing, like there's been more opportunity there. I've done a weekly newspaper column since 2007 for a couple of newspapers up here. Like it's a long time, um, but, you know, I think probably over a thousand newspaper columns. I don't know. I don't know how many it's been, but, um, but yeah, I do a lot of that and it, and it, you know, obviously like there's way more views and stuff on video and social media. And I do a little bit of that stuff too, but there's definitely still an audience for like hard copy magazines and newspapers. And, um, you know, so I, 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 as long as that stuff's still around, I'll probably still do it. But, uh, but yeah, it was just another, um, you know, way to try and keep some flow going and avoid again, having to get a real job. I love it. I love it. Especially when it's writing about fishing too. I mean, I'll read stuff about fishing all the time with different tactics or even about how someone did on a specific tournament, even if they might not, might not have come in first, but just like what they were thinking about before, during, and then after they did the tournament, it's pretty cool to like read about or even listen to about on like a podcast setting for sure. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, it's, you got to try and do it to where it's not just like advertorial too. Like you, you know, you try and promote, is, you know, a little bit as subtle as you can, like tell people if it's good information, then it's, you know, that's fine. And, and try and get good photos to go with it. But, you know, the days of just like writing, I have to use this such and such crankbait on this such and such line, you know, like no one wants to read that kind of stuff really. So it's, uh, it's, yeah, try and teach people, tell a story um, and that sort of thing. I love it. I love it. All right. So let's wrap it up here. I was like asking everyone, what's your um, PB smallmouth and largemouth? Uh, big smallmouth, 7.60. That one came from uh, Sturgeon Bay on Lake Michigan. Um, probably around 10 years ago now. I mean, it was, uh, it was a while ago. I, I fished there for years and years, the big Sturgeon Bay open in May. And anymore, um, I miss it a lot now. I'm going to miss it again this year. It's just tough with our elite schedule. But uh that was that. And then big largemouth, I actually caught in an FLW tour event at Pickwick Lake. Um, and it was in 2014. So almost 10 years ago as well, but it was a 10 pound, 12 ounce largemouth. Um, caught it on a football jig and, uh, just, you know, it was my lucky day. I was leading the event after day one and, um, you know, ended up having a pretty good tournament, but I, I didn't, I didn't keep up the 25 pound average that I had going the first day. That's a pretty good start, though. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. not bad. Yeah, when you get your biggest one in a tournament, I mean, that's always good. Last year, I had my biggest fish of the year, I think. Um, I caught in a in the Lake Fork event as well and won a big little big fish bonus. So, yeah, every so often that that works out. And, uh, you know, when it does, it's a, it's a good thing. I love it. I love it. All right, Gussie, let's uh, tell everyone, all the listeners, where people can find you and kind of follow along long and uh, your success on your social medias and all those different platforms. All right. Yeah, no, I'm on Instagram and Facebook, Gussie Outdoors, um, Jeff Gustafson on Facebook and, uh, you know, got a YouTube channel. I do a little bit of stuff on there, but uh, yeah. And then just bat- follow along the elite series at Bassmaster.com. And um, yeah, I mean, if anyone has any questions, I'm pretty easy to find. And uh, you can, if you send me a message, I'll get back to you. So thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, Gussie. We'll have to do it some down some day down the road too. Get you on season three. Sounds appreciate good. It, man. Keep, uh, keep up the good work. I appreciate it. Thanks. You just listened to the Fishing Fanatics podcast with your host Eric Stewart. Feel free to check out our other podcasts and our other interviews on our channel on Spotify, YouTube, and much more. Check out our Instagram page, TikTok, and Facebook as well.